Welcome to another FAQ Monday. I'm your host, Fluff. And uh, let's see, now this would be 301. I saw some saltiness about th episode 300. There was no questions. Well, there was questions, just not new questions because they were dated, because they were old, because that was the, that was the, yeah. Anyway, let's get into it, shall we? Let's go set. What is your favorite Mesa amp? And how long did it take till you felt comfortable just grabbing a guitar and playing in front of people? Ian, fantastic set of questions. My favorite Mesa Boogie amp is probably and still is the old two channel rectifier amps, dual or triple. They're both great, baby. But um, if I had to choose, probably choose the dual rectifier, two channel, maybe rev D or F. Uh, as far as uh, how long it took to get comfortable just grabbing a guitar and playing it in front of people? That is actually an interesting question because I didn't get comfortable playing in front of people until well into uh, Rust Repose touring. My old band, Rust Repose, you, some of you may remember. Um, we did a lot of touring and prior to that, I used to have massive anxiety issues whenever I would play with any of my bands from the time I was 16 years old up until I was 35 years old. Um, I would do this thing where I would death grip the pick and then my thumb muscle would go numb and I couldn't strum and my my mind would go blank. And just, that happened every show and it never ever went away. But something I realized was that's because I didn't do it often enough. I didn't do it on a regular basis enough. Gigging, playing shows. Um, it wasn't until Rest Repose went on their first uh, tour, the Sleep City tour. It was two weeks long, and it took about seven, you know, a week of shows, you know, seven, eight shows, until I finally had this moment of, okay, it's going to be okay. And then we didn't play shows for a while, so I was back to my old ways of just having this massive anxiety thing. And then we went on a full U.S. tour, which was like six weeks and two weeks into that was when I got comfortable enough with myself to kind of just let myself do the thing, if that makes sense. The moral of the story is repetition. That's, that's what's going to get you comfortable enough to play in front of people. Just continue to do it and it will get better. But, uh, you know, until then... You know, everyone goes through it, man. It's all good. Favorite plugin you can't live without? Ivan, good question. You know what? I don't know if I can name just one. I will name you, well, let's choose three. Um, plugins I can't live without. Uh, Oak Sound Sooth 2, wonderful plugin. Uh, I really love FabFilter Pro Q3. I don't think I could, I don't think I could do business without that, that plugin, honestly. Also, I really love uh, Submission Audio's Flatline. I use the crap out of that because it's it's so good at what it does. It's a clipper limiter, whatever you want to call it. I mean, clipper is not a limiter, but anyway, that's another episode. Submissions uh, Submission Audio's Flatline is a mastering quality clipper and you can do surgical things with it and it has made my mixes improve dramatically especially with the newest update with the safe clip and the oversampling etc cetera, etc cetera. so yeah those three are plugins that i couldn't live without i probably couldn't do my demos as i do them now without those three plugins powered cabs thoughts slash recommendations using a helix floor max thank you for your question Mm, why do I keep folding my arms? Like I'm, I'm, te I'm lecturing. Am I lecturing you guys? I hope not. Maybe I am. I'll try not to. Cash. We're keeping it cash. Uh, okay. So, powered cabs is something I'm, a, I'm a little weird about myself. I see the value, and I have gotten great sounds out of a couple of them. Um, when using so my personal philosophy with what I do with my band is, you know, we, we have helixes, we run, you know, front of house and then we amplify. And I get asked a lot, why don't we use uh, full range cabinets for our helixes? 
full range cabinet versus a guitar cabinet, a full range cabinet is going to recreate basically the direct sound of any digital modeler processor accurately throughout the entire frequency spectrum. You know, they're called FRFRs, which, you know, the FR stands for full range, full response or something like that. Um, but anyway, it's a full range speaker setup. So you can get the breadth of what you're putting into it. Um, we use guitar speakers. We still use guitar cabinets because most of the time when we're playing, um, you know, headlining shows or maybe uh, smaller shows, you know, a lot of bands backline and share cabinets. And it's critical that we are able to do that. Either other bands use our stuff or we use other band stuff. So I need to be able to plug into any guitar cab because I don't want to be limited by, oh, I can't, I can't use your stuff, even though it'd be so convenient for load in and load out. I have to have my full range set up, you know, that kind of thing. Also, you know, most of the full range speakers, the, the affordable ones, namely like the Headrush, that is a rebranded PA speaker. That is nothing more than a, than a cheap PA speaker. And people love it and it sounds fine, but it is a PA speaker. Whereas something like the Helix, if you're, you know, you mentioned you're using the Helix, uh, the Helix floor, the Line 6 full range cabs are specifically tailored for your Helix. So if a full range speaker is something you are looking for, I wouldn't get anything else but the Line 6 ones myself if if I was running a Helix or anything for that matter. Uh, they work together, they're made for each other. Uh, I had a 212 and it sounded awesome. I just never used it for my situation. But if you're gonna go full range, definitely go with the Line 6 stuff. They're very, very good. What's the best way you remember to properly connect an amp head to a speaker cabinet without messing up either? The Ohm's balancing act throws me off every time, thanks. Isaac, that's a great question. A very common one, and there's a lot of confusion over the Ohm's law kind of a thing, and you know, speaker cabinet amp mismatch thing. A simple way to remember it is uh, the speaker cabinet can be equal or more, or if you want to think of it as the amplifier, the, the amplifier Ohm's rating can be equal to or less than the speaker cabinet, meaning speaker cabinet rating cannot be below whatever the output jack is on your amplifier, right? So eight to eight's fine, eight to 16 is fine. 16 amp into an eight ohm cabinet is not okay. Now, most of the time uh, you will see eight and 16 ohms. Very, very rarely in the guitar world do you ever see four ohms. That's basically, that's mainly like a, a base cabinet thing. Base cabinets, you'll see two ohms and four ohms. Ohms has to do, you know, with the, the cabinet's efficiency, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, we're not gonna get into all that. Um, just know that the numbers can be equal to, try to try to get them the same, or the amplifier can be less than the rated cabinet. Like a cabinet's right here, I keep gesturing down to the cabinet. Um, that's the best way and easiest way that I think of it. Um, Hopefully that helps. I will link down below in the description for uh, for more on this very deep subject. Is it a normal feeling that my fear of sounding like every other band out there is greater than my desire to be in a band? Really stuck with this lately. Alan, um, kind of? That's a little unusual. I mean, I can't think of any time I was like, no, I'm just not gonna do it because I don't want to sound like anybody else. You're gonna sound like somebody you're gonna sound like somebody in the beginning. Everyone does. I mean, that's kind of the rite of passage, right? You you kind of meld your influences together and then you kind of grow with your own thing and you develop and you mature musically. That's, that's how it works. Um, I would say if you are feeling that your fear of sounding like every other band out there is preventing you from playing, then really is that just, are you using that as an excuse to just not play? Which is possible. I'm just asking questions here, but these are things for you to evaluate. But I would say uh, playing is more important than just, yeah, you know, it, it doesn't make, it doesn't make any sense in that 
you know, um, making no music at all is worse than making something that may potentially sound like somebody else for you to grow from. Not making music at all is the worst thing you could possibly do, in my opinion. So take that for what it's well uh, for what it's worth. But uh, yeah, start playing, man. And that does it for this episode of FAQ Monday. If you have a question, feel free to leave them on down below in the comments or go on over to my Twitter and ask away. Generally, I will post something when I'm looking to, to film a batch of these and go, hey, questions for FAQ Monday and go. So yeah, watch out for that tweet as well. All the pickable links down below in the description. You've been wonderful, I've been fluff. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. If you liked the video you just watched, please consider subscribing. And if you wanna further support me and what I do, consider using some of the affiliate links down below in the description of this video. Go on over to Sweetwater, buy yourself something and help me out at the same time. It's a win-win for both of us.